Hi guys, I'm Beth. Today I'm going to read Joshua 24, Judges 1 to 5, Proverbs 3, and Psalm 127. Let's get started. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, For says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham, and of Nahor. And they served other gods. And they took their father Abraham from beyond the river, and led him to all the lands of Canaan. And made it offering many. And they gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. And I gave Esau the hill country of Hill country of Sir to possess. And Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. And I sent Moses and Aaron, and I played to Egypt with what I did in the midst of it. And afterward, I afterward I brought you, and I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. And when they cried to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and made the sea come upon them and covered them. And your eyes saw what I did in Egypt, and you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. And I fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, and you took possession of them, and I destroyed them before you. And Balak, son of B, Zippor, son of King of Moab, arose and fought against Israel. And he sent and invited Balak, son of B, or to curse you. But I would not listen to Balak. Indeed, he blessed you. So I delivered you out of his hand. Then you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the leaves of Canaanites, leaders of the Jericho, fought against you. And I said, the Amoris, the Parasites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the the Gergashites, the Hittites, and the Jebusites. And I gave them into your hand. And I set the hornet up before you. And drove them out before you. The two things of the Amorites. And it was not by a sword or by a but I gave you a land, you know, which you had not laboured, and then seeds that you had not built, and you dwelt in the food. And they ate the fruit of them and all the orchards, which you did not plant. Did not plant. <clears throat> and now, therefore, fear the Lord, and fear the Lord, and serve in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond. The river and in Egypt, and so forth. And it is, if it is evil in your eyes, so serve the Lord. And choose this day whom you will say, Where are the gods your fathers draw served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell? Now as for me and my house, and we will serve the Lord. And then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did all those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way, how we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, all the people, the peoples, the immorals who live in the land. Therefore we will also serve serve for the Lord, for he is our God. So Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions for your sins. And if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do harm to you, after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, Your witnesses against yourself that you choose the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your heart to the Lord. And the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and put in place statues and rules, statues and rules <clears throat> for the Meshach. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took the large stone and set up there under the Sabbath terebinth that was by the sanctuary of the law. And Joshua said to all the people, You know, this stone shall be a witness against us. And you know, it has heard all the words of the law that he spoke to us. Therefore it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent all the people, sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. And after these things, Joshua the son of Nun, servant of the Lord, died, being one hundred and ten years old, and they buried him in his own inheritance at Timnath, so, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, north of the mountain of Gash. And it shall serve the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who were out there, Joshua, and had known all the work that the Lord did for Israel. And as for the bones of Joseph, which all the people which are brought up from Egypt, they buried them at Shepherd in the place of the land that Jacob brought, brought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of money. It became an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. And Elzar the son of Aaron died, and they buried him at Gibeah, the town of Phinehas, his son, which had been given him in the hill country of Ephraim.
Judges 1 to 4, 1 to 5. After the death of Joshua, the people of Israel inquired of the Lord, He shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight against them. The Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. And Judah said to Simeon and his brother, Come up with me into the territory allotted to me, that we may fight against Canaanites. And I likewise will go with you into the territory allotted to you. So Simeon went with them. And Judah went up, and the Lord gave the Canaanites and the parasites into their hand, and defeated ten thousand of them at Bezek. They found Adoni, Adoni Bezek at Bezek, and fought against them, and defeated the Canaanites and the parasites. Adoni Bezek fled, but they pursued him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his big toes. And Adoni Bezek said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and their big toes cut off, he used to pick up scraps under my table. And as I have done, so God has repaid me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. And the man of Judah fought against Jerusalem. And captured it and struck it with the edge of the sword and set the sea on fire. And after the men of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who lived in the hill country in the neck in the lowland, and Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Heshbon, and they defeated Shushai and Ahiman and Talmai. And there they went against the inhabitants of Debir. The name of Debir was formerly Kiriosapha. And Michael said, He who attacked Kiriosapha and captured it, I'll give my, him Axel, my daughter, for a wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, captured it. And he gave to him Axa, his daughter, for a wife. And when she came to him, she urged him to ask her father for food. And she dismounted him. She dismounted from a donkey. And Kayla said to him, What do you want? She said, Give me a blessing. Since you have set me in the land of the naked, give me also springs of water. And then Caleb gave me her the upper springs and the lower springs. And the descendants of the Kenite, Moses' father in law, went up with the people. Of Judah from the city of Palm into the wilderness of Judah with Rise and Nega near Ara, and they went and so with the people. And Judah went with Sumi, his brother, and they defeated the Canaanites who inhabited Zephath and devoted to destruction. And the name of the city was called Homer. Judah also captured Gaza with its territory, and Ashkelon with its territory, and Ekron with its territory. And the Lord was with Judah, and he took possession of the hill country, but he could not drive. He could not drive out the inhabitants of the plain because they had chariots of iron. And Hebron was given to Caleb and Moses said, And he drove out from his three sons of Anak, that the people of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who lived in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So the Jebusites had lived with the people of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. The house of Joseph also went up against Bethel, and the law was with them. And the house of Joseph was scarred out Bethel. And the spies saw a man coming out of the sea, and they said to him, He show us the way into the sea, and we will deal kindly with you. And he showed them the way into the sea, and they struck the sea with them. They struck the sea with the edge of the sword, but they let the man and all his family go. And then the man went to the land to hit us, and built a city and called his name Lost. That is his name to this day. <clears throat> the man said, Did not drive out the inhabitants of Bashan and his villages. Beth Sheen and his villages, or Tanak and his villages, or the inhabitants of Dor and his villages, or the inhabitants of Iblim and his villages, or the inhabitants of Mekdor and his villages, for the Canaanites persisted in dwelling in that land. In that land, when Israel grew strong, they put the Canaanites to force labor. They did not drive them out completely. And Ephraim did not drive them out the Canaanites who lived in Gaza, so the Canaanites who lived in Gaza alone. So alone did not drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, or the inhabitants of Nehalal. Now, how long? So the Canaanites lived among them, and they became subject to forced labor. And Asher did not drive out the inhabitants of Acre, or the inhabitants of the Cedar, or Alab, or Axib, or Halba, or, or Aphek, or Rehob. And so the Asherites lived among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. And after they did not drive out the inhabitants of Ashunai, or the inhabitants of Beth and Ai. So they lived among the Canaanites and the uh, inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anna became subject to forced labor for them. And the Amorites passed the pressed people down back into the hill country, for they did not allow them to come down to the plain. And uh, the Amorites persisted in dwelling in Mount Harris, in Aijan, and in Shalim. But the hand of the house of Joseph rested heavily on them, and they became subject to forced labor. And the border of the Amorites ran from the asset of Akram. From silver and upward. Now the angel of the Lord went from Gilgal and to Bokim, and he said, I brought you out from Egypt and brought you into the land that I shall to give to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break down their altars, 
You did not obey my voice. Uh, what is this you have done? I say now I say I will not drive them up for you, but they shall become thorns in your sight, and their God shall become a snare to you. And as soon as the angel of the Lord spake all these words to all the people of Israel, the people lifted up their voices and wept, and they called the name of the place Bokken, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. And Joshua dismissed the heap of the people of Israel and each to his inheritance, and take possession of the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And, uh, on all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, and all who had seen the great work that that the Lord had done for Israel, and Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of one hundred ten years. They buried him within the boundaries of his inheritance, at Tim, in Timnath Harris, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of the mountain of Gash. And all the generation of Israel were gathered to their fathers. So there, and there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord. Or of the work that he had done for Israel. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the bowels. And they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went after other gods from among the gods of the people who were around them and bowed down to them. And they provoked the Lord to anger. They abandoned the Lord. They abandoned the Lord and served the bowels and the Ashtar. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And then he gave them over to ponderers. And who plundered them? They sold them into the hand of their hand of their surrounding enemies, that they could no longer withstand their enemies. Whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them for home, as the Lord had warned, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were in terrible distress. And the Lord raised the judges who saved them out of the hand of those who plundered them. Yet they did not listen to their judge, for their whore after those after other gods and bad dead. Uh, the soon turned snow. They soon turned aside from the way in which their fathers had walked, who obeyed the commandments of, of the Lord, and they did not do so. Whenever the Lord raised up judges, the Lord was with the judge, and he saved them by the hand of their enemies all the days of that judge. Now uh, the Lord was moved to pity by the groaning of those who afflicted with Joshua, afflicted with and oppressed them. Now, uh, whenever the judge died, they turned back and were more corrupt than their father, going after other gods and bowing him down to them. And they did not drop any of their practices or their stubborn way. <clears throat> Some way. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against his and he said, Because this people has transgressed against transgressed my covenant and then I commanded it my fathers and not obeyed my voice, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died, nor to test Israel by the sin and whenever they will take care to walk in the way. Read of the Lord as their fathers did. Well, not. Well, so the Lord left those nations from driving them out quickly, and he did not give in them into the hand of Joshua. Now these are the nations that the Lord left to test Israel by them. That is, all in Israel who had not experienced all the wars and pain. It was only in order that the generations of the people of Israel might know war, to teach war to those who had not known it before. These other nations, the five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hamites who lived on Laban, from Mount Baal as far as Lebohan, they were full of testing of Israel to know whether Israel would obey the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. So the people of Israel lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hebites, and the Jebusites, and their daughters took to, they took to themselves for wives, and their own daughters they gave to their own sons. Mm. And the people of Israel did what was evil on the side of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the bowels and the Asherah. Therefore, the anger of the Lord is kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Christian Rishathaim, the king of Mesopotamia. And the people served Christian to Shem Rishathaim eight years. But when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the people of Israel who saved him. Hothner, the son of Kenaz, Kael was a younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he judged Israel. And he went up to war, and the Lord gave Cushan Rishathaim, the king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim, so the land had rest forty years. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died, and the people of Israel did it again, do. What was evil in the sight of the Lord? And the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel. Because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He gathered to himself the Ammonites and the Amalekites, and went and defeated Israel. And they took possession of the sea of Palms, 
Now the Hebrew is just a big one came in all of 18 years. And the people heard him cried out to God, and the Lord raised up with them and delivered Ehud, son of Gar, and the Benjaminite, and left him. And he put Ehud's entry, Eli, and Jacob, the king of And Ehud made for himself a saw with two edges to keep it in there. And he bound up on his thigh and stopped under his clothes. Then he presented the tribute to Eglon and King Amal. Now Eglon was a very fat man. And when Ehud had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who had the tribute. And he himself turned back at the idols near Job and said, I have a secret message for you, King. And he commanded silence. And all his attendants went out from his house. And Ehud came to him and said, while he was sitting alone in his cold roof chamber, he had sent a message from Golfi. And he arose from his seat, and he had to reach with his left hand, took the sword from his right hand, and thrust it into his belly, and the hilt also went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not pull the sword out of his belly, and the dung came out, and Ehab went into the porch, and closed the doors of the roof chamber behind it, and locked them. When he had gone, the servants came, and when they saw that the doors of the roof were chamber were locked, they thought, surely he's relieving himself in the closet of the cool, sh- of the cool chamber, and they waited until they were embarrassed. Now when he still did not open the doors of the roof chamber, they took the key and opened it, and there lay their lord dead on the floor. He had escaped while they delayed, and he passed beyond the idols and escaped to Syria. When he arrived, he sat on the trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim, and the people of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he was their leader. And he said, Follow after me, for the Lord was given your enemy, has given your enemies and the Moabites into your hand. So they went down after him and seized the lord, forwards of the Jordan against the Moabites, and did not allow anyone to pass over. And they killed at that time about 10,000 of the Moabites, full, strong, able bodied men. Not a man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest for 80 years. After him was Shamgar the son of Anath, who killed 600 of the Philistines with an ox goat, and he was to save Israel. And the people of Israel did again, again did what was evil inside the Lord, after Ehud died. Then the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Cain, who reigned in Hazel. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harosheth Hagoyim, and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. But he had 900 chariots of iron, and he oppressed the people of Israel cruelly for 20 years. Now Deborah, a prophetess, and the wife of Lapidoth, was judging inside at that time. She was used to sit under the palm of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel in the whole country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned, she sent and summoned Barak, son of Ebenon, from Kedesh and Naphtali, and said, And has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you? Go, gather your men out to war, take the ten thousand from the people of Naphtali, and the people of Zebulun. And I'll draw us this up, and the general of Japan's army to meet you. And the river Kishim with his chariots and his troops, and I'll give it into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go, but if you will not go with me, I will not go. He said, Surely I will go with you. I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to a boy, for the Lord will sell this right into the hand of a woman. And then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. And Barak called out Zebulun and Naphtali to Kedesh. And ten thousand men went up at his hill, and the world went up with him. Now Heber the Kenan's Kenai had separated from the Kenai. The descendants of Hobab, the father in law of Moses, and had pitched his tent as far away as the Ogin Zanonim, which is near Kedesh. And Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abino, had gone up, Mount Tor- up to Mount Torbal. Sisera called out all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the men who were with him, and Maharshath had gone to the revocation. And Deborah said to Barak, Up, oh, for this is the day in which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. Does not the Lord go out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Sisera. Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. And the Lord rode to Sisera and all his chariots and his all his army before Barak by the edge of the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot. And Barak received the chariots and, and the army to Harasheth had gone. And all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. No man was left, but Sisera fell and fled away on the foot to the tent of jail. The, the uh, wife of Heber the king. So there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazel and the house of Heber the king of And Jael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not be afraid. So he turned aside to her and to the tent, and she covered him with a rug, and he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. And he said to her, See at the opening of the tent, and if any man comes and asks you, is he not there, say no. But Jael, the wife of Heber, took the tent peg, and took a hammer in her hand, 
And she went softly to him and dragged the peg into his temple until it went down into the ground. Now she was lying fast asleep from weariness. So he died. And behold, as Barak was pursuing his sister, Jael went out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. So he went into a tent, and there lay Sisera dead with his tent peg in his temple. So that day God subdued Jabin the king of Canaan before the people of Israel. And the hand of the people of Israel pressed hard and hard against Jabin the king of Canaan. And after they destroyed Jabin the king of Canaan. Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of the Lord, on that day. And that the leaders took the lead in Israel, that the people offered themselves willing. Thus, hear, O kings, give ye, O princes, to the Lord I'll sing, I'll make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Eden, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, yes, the clouds dropped water, the mountains quaked before the Lord. And then even Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel, in the days of Shamgar, son of Anna, in the days of Jael, the highways of Abend, and the travelers kept to the byways, the villagers seized in Israel, they ceased to be until I arose. I, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel, when new gods were chosen, and when walls and the gates, where she will speak to be seen among forty thousand in Israel. My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel, who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless the Lord, tell, you, tell the you who ride on white donkeys, and you who sit on rich carpets, and you who walk by the way, to the sound of musicians at the watering place, and they repeat the righteous triumphs of the Lord. The righteous triumphs of the villagers in Israel, and down to the gates marched the people of the Lord. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, break out in song. Arise, Barak, lead away your captives, and the son of Abino, and down marched the remnant of the noble, the people of the Lord marched down from me against the mighty. Then from Ephraim they read, they marched down into the valley, following you, Benjamin, with your kinsmen. From Machia marched down the commanders, and from Zalbul and those who bear the lead to not staff. The princes of Isaac who came with Deborah, and Isaac were faithful to Barak. Into the valley they rushed at his heels, among the plans of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Now do you sit still among the sheep folds to hear the whistling for the flocks? Among the clans of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and Dan, why did he stay with the ships? Asher sat still at the coast of the sea, saying, Where is the landers? Devlin is the people who risked their lives to the death, and Naphtali too on the heights of the field. And the kings came, they fought, then fought, then fought the kings of Canaan at Tanak by the waters of Megadeth. They got no spoil of the shore. From heaven the stars fought, from their courses they fought against Israel. The torrent Kishin swept them away. The ancient time, the torrent Kishin, march on my soul with my. And then Mao beat the horses hoofs with the galloping, galloping of its steeds. Curse Mao's with says the angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord, curse, curses and houses thoroughly, because they did not come to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. And the most blessed of one meet Jael, the wife of the head of the king. The tenth telling woman, most blessed, she asked for water, and she gave him milk. He broke and brought him curds in a noble's bowl. She sent her hand to the tent peg. And her right hand to the workman's mouth. She struck Sisera and she crushed her head, his head. She scattered, she shattered and pierced his temple. Beneath her feet he sank, he lay, fell, he lay still. Between her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, he, there he fell, dead. Out of the window she peered. The mother of Sisera wailed through the rise. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why chariot the hoof beats of his chariot? The wise princess is Anna, indeed, she answers herself. Have they not found and divided the spot? All room or two for every man. Spoil of dyed materials for Sisera. Spoil for, of dyed materials and brighter, two pieces of dyed work and brighter for the naked spoil. So may all your enemies perish, O Lord, but your friends be like the sun as he rises in the night, and the land have rest for forty years. Proverbs 3 My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my command for the length and days and length of days and years of life and peace they'll add to you. Let no service, love and faithfulness forsake you. Find them around you now, like a the tablet of power. So you find faith and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understand understand. Do not always acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your path. Do not wisen your own and fear the Lord and turn away from evil. He'll be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, and with your first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with honey, and your vats will be bursting with wine. May son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be wary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves, and is the father to the son in whom he delights. Thus is the one who finds wisdom, and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than grain from silver, and a profit is better than gold. It is more precious than swords and jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. The wife is in her right hand, and the left hand are riches and all. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is true life to those who lay hold of her, those who hold her fast are called blessed. The Lord by wisdom found with the earth, by understanding he established the heavens. And his knowledge the deeds broke open, and the clouds dropped down the dew. And I said, Do not lose sight of these, keep sound wisdom and its discretion. And there will be life for your soul, and adornment for you. 
Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of some terror or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being poor. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is you. When it is your power to do, do not say to your neighbor, Go and come again. Tomorrow I will give when you have it with you. Do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not treat any of his ways. Whoever well, devious person is an abomination to the Lord. And if the upright are in his confidence, the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. The reward the scorns he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. The wise one her, her honor, but fools get disgrace. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, those who build it labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, for eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives his beloved gives to his beloved sleep. You know, the children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of all in their word reward. Like the arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Now the stand I should now do the Lord's prayer. Please by our Father in heaven, and they be your name. The kingdom come, he will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He will study our daily bread, and bless our debts, and so we are not debtors. He is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. Because of the kingdom and the power and the glory of our Father. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.